Hello everybody, my name is Cem Bassoy, and I would like to talk about algorithms and iterators for multidimensional arrays. Well, I, I will skip through that because you ev everybody knows that, how you can allocate arrays. So um, what important is, is that it's contiguously allocated, and you can use the standard library, as you know, you could use std array, std vector, um, and of course, C++ provides you with uh, built-in types for multidimensional arrays. And again, here it's important that it's contiguously allocated. So you want to be efficient, you want to access your elements very fast. And what else? It's um, stored in a last order storage format. And of course, you can do it with the std library, the standard library, using std array and std vector. And of course, maybe you, you don't want to use the std vector for multidimensional arrays. It, is it not very um, efficient? Well, you can use C++ arrays um, very conveniently, and sometimes you can use also standard algorithms for that. But when it comes to separating dimensions, there might be some difficulties. For instance, if you print and if you want to distinguish between the first or second dimension, so the last code, the, the code you see here, it is, uh, the print is directly parsable in MATLAB. It's, yeah, so it's quite nice. But what happens if you have more complicated operations, such as a tensor vector multiplication? How do you define your interface? How do you define your interface when the number of dimensions is dynamic or variable? And what if your contraction dimension R is also variable? How do you define your interface? And how do you use uh, multidimensional arrays? Well, there, is, there were proposals, many, and I'll take one of them. So uh, the basic idea is to take a contiguously allocated memory space and to have an interpretation on it. You have to define a shape tuple or bounds, and then you say, okay, I, I take uh, my 24 elements, and then I want it to be a three-dimensional array, with uh, the dimensions 4, 2, 3. I could interpret it in a different way and say 4, 6, and it would be a matrix. Well, this has been implemented in the guideline support library, and what you do is, well, you take your std vectors and then you would transform it into a view or multi-span in, in that case, and you would um, need to define your dimensions. And what's very nice is that you can now use, with the help of bounds, you can use the st standard algorithms in order to access your elements. And you don't need to write all the, all the for loops. So this one would uh, transpose the second and third dimension here. Well, this is very nice. And uh, the, 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 the library supports iterators, multi-indices, bounds, sections, and threaded access. But, um, and you can use it with C++ standard algorithms, but there is one thing. You need translation. You need to translate multi-indices into memory indices. Well, what does that mean? You have a multi-index space for each L. Well, the array has a multi-index space, and it operates within that index space. And for each element, you need to apply a layout function so that whenever you access an element, it's needs to be transformed by an inner product into the um, relative memory, uh, memory space. Yes, and this has to be done for every element. So this is one crucial thing. And what we wanted to do is that we wanted to have separate algorithms for multidimensional arrays. And we wanted that these algorithms do not translate multi-indices into memory indices do not require reuse within their body. As you can see in that example, we need to still use the data structures. So we cannot really separate between data structures and algorithms here. And we wanted to support many storage formats, including the first and the last storage, and also have a convenient, easy to use interface. So decouple algorithms from data structures. And we start with iterators, of course, because that's the linkage between algorithms and data structures. And the first thing is that we define a stride-based stride iterator. 
It's kind of an extension of the standard random access iterator. It has a stride within it. So it is defined for a specific dimension. And what's nice about it, it's compatible with the C++ standard, C++ standard library algorithms. And here's an example. Um, you would define your arrays. We have defined our own arrays, but you could do it with your arrays. You can define views on it, special kind of strided, for instance. And you can use your, uh, the standard um, library algorithms as you want, or as you're used to. And in this case, you would use standard iterators in the first example, but in the second, you would say, I would like to iterate over the second, dim uh, second dimension. You would start in the beginning. You would like to start somewhere else, of course. You have to define your starting multi-index and then say you want to iterate over the third dimension. <coughs> and now we can define our multi-dimensional iterators. So the multi-dimensional iterator is nothing else than a factory class for stride-based iterators. It doesn't hold the stride-based iterators, but it um, provides begin and end functions so that you can instantiate stride-based iterators. It only ho holds the current pointer to the data structure and a pointer to the strides of the data structure. So really a thin data structure in order to um, iterate within algorithms. It doesn't support um, iterator arithmetic, so it's up to the stride-based iterator to iterate over the specific dimension. And how does, uh, for instance, the um, iteration over a complete multi-index look, multi-index space look like? Well, for each um, for each dimension, we would um, would first instantiate the multi-dimensional iterator, and then iterate with the help of stride-based iterators over the specific dimension. Quite simple. And with this, we can, we can define um, uh, really nice tensor vector multiplications, independent of the order <coughs> and layout. And what's nice about it is, this is the, f um, the arrays are allocated in the first, first order format, but you can use also the last order storage format. In that case, you, do, you didn't need to change your code. It's quite, quite nice. Well, then you can de define your algorithms with multi-iterators. So this looks like the transform implementation in the standard library. Um, however, you need to instantiate for every recursion level, you need to instantiate stride-based iterators. And in the most inner loop, you would have the standard library function call to the, to, well, in this case, to the standard transform using stride-based iterators. And it would, um, um, it would transform then the most inner loop accordingly. How do we use it? It's so simple. We, we only need to instantiate the multi-dimension iterator for A and C, and we are, uh, we use a lambda function, whatever you like, and then that's it. We've done it for a couple of um, <laughs> a, cut, a couple of algorithms, and the ones where you need a contraction actually, just to just to be sure that it works. Also, if the iteration is not that obvious, and that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>